God prophetically, prophetically, I said prophetically, has the crowd that we have here today. He's kind of empty this out so that we gather and put together. Uh, I was going to sing a song, but it's okay. I'm going to move probably in the middle. Uh, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, prophetically, he's put us in a uh, in a place where you now have to think about your actions. Amen. All right. I need you all. I need your attention. You need to think about your actions. You can no longer willy-nilly just do stuff. Now, now, now I know the devil's going to start talking to you and make your mind start wandering. And so you're going to have to bring your own mind under subjection. You're going to have to tell your own mind, I got to listen to the word today. Because if you had an answer, if you had an answer, you would have gave it already. But since you don't have an answer, God needs to put this word in your belly to help you formulate an answer for where life is getting ready to take you. This is a season. This is a time. I'm going to put it this way. This is a time and a shift for people who feel like I don't know what to do. I need to tell you, you're, this right here is called hallway. Okay, you know the one thing, I'm going to jump right into it. You know the one thing I, I hate the most is going, when I spent, I spent several years going to the doctor, having to be wheeled down the hallway, going, saying, the, the, the GPS in the car saying we arrived. And then I would have to go up the elevator. And then thinking that you would get to the doctor's door, you find out that you are a long hallway away from destination. I, I, uh, but the, 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 the navigation said you arrived. See, when the Holy Ghost says you arrive, he never describes the hallway. He, he never describes, and some of y'all going to say amen. You got to say amen out of your hurt and pain. You, you got to understand that a lot of times your destination brings you to the building, but not to the room. Okay? It, it brings you to where God wants to move. Do you know a lot of people wasted time going to the spot of Azusa, but never ever capturing the Holy Ghost that was there? Because they went to the spot but the Holy Ghost was not at the location. I, I need you to, to need, and what a lot of us have done in the church, because we're getting ready to enter into different seasons. As my season changes, the church season changes. I don't want you to get so caught up on I'm changing, because I've already been what he's called me. All right, I don't, I don't. I had to, you see, you, you I need some of you to get excited and not feel the way you feel because you've already been what's been prophesied. Amen. Jesus was in the beginning before he came to the world because he was the lamb slain. But in heaven, he wasn't. Okay. I, uh, he was the lamb slain in glory. You are who you were, are supposed to be right now. You are your future now. But you feel like you feel now. You are a dualistic person. You have a great future, which and your future is now, and you have a horrible present, which is now. Which one do you choose? You're in the hallway position. Mm, okay. Mm. What is a season? It's, uh, what's the definition? Well, it's weather-based. It's based on timing. Okay? Okay, so I'll give you my message. My message is, my season has changed. Don't get stuck in the middle. Can I get an amen? Can I, I, need, 
I need some dedicated people who's going to talk back to me. Don't just look at me. I need you to open your mouth like you at a movie. Talk back to me. All right? Like, thank you. Thank you. All right? The weather is, the season is weather-based. We understand. Every pastor in America done preached seasons about 100 times. Right? And so you get bored with seasons. You get bored with it. Because I know. Winter, spring, summer, fall, and the fifth one called dew. Great. Yeah. Dew is not a season. <laughs> you know, it's not a natural season, okay? So we don't go out and peel. Oh, let me put on my jacket because it's dew season. <laughs> no one does that, you know? You got a winter, you got a spring. You got to fall. You got clothes for it. It's weather-based. All right? A lot of us, we spiritually don't wear the right clothing. Because we only want spiritual summers. And not spirit. And some of you need to know you're going through a cold winter in the spirit realm. You couldn't buy a sunlight to save your life. And this is where, and this is where the immature church quits because they want God to only shine on them. Shine on me. And the Lord is saying, no, I'm not. I ain't shining on you. It's going to be cold. Don't you know if there's sunlight Sometimes, and depending on the location, if God only gave us sunlight, he would kill the vegetation in our life. So that's all you want. And, and all you want is God to give you one type of weather. And what happens is it kills your growth. Okay. Sometimes seasons are circumstances based. Okay. I hope you're ready for this. Okay. Um, there is a word in the Latin. It's S-E-R-E-R-E, -E -E, all right? And, it's, and it means, y'all gonna catch me out there today to make fun of my mother's stammering tongue she gave me. And it means to sow, okay? It means to sow. It means to sow. But it also has a connection to season. Each season needs some type of sowing. Okay. And I know you ain't going to say amen. But how do you, how do you sow into, in the wintertime? What do you sow in the winter? Well, okay. Well, you change the O to an E. And you start sowing clothing. In the winter, you need cover. You don't need so much seed because you can't put seed in a cold and frozen ground. That's the problem with the church. You want to put seed in the ground all the time where you should be sowing clothing. Even God sown into the life of Adam and Eve by making them clothes. All right, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God said, give me that. Give me, give me those fig leaves and put on what I gave you because if I don't sow into your life, you will be cold because now, because you came out of the spirit, you are now susceptible to the elements. The season changes when you sin. Oh, oh okay, see, some of y'all don't want that, right? I had to learn that my season changed when I sinned in the winter. Uh, uh, uh. Some of you need to say amen on it because God would have kept you, God would have kept you hidden in certain seasons. But because we decided to sin in the season, he exposed us to the element. Now you're freezing. As long, I know y'all going to be quiet, but as long as Adam and Eve were in the glory, they never had to worry about weather. Oh, now, he, now he has to even worry about, see, when you mess up in a certain season, 
the, uh, what God will make you do, he'll make you gather, he'll let you gather, but you'll sweat for it. See, one of the things that we don't understand and we never talk about is called the sweat of his brow. And a lot of us are sweating just for a little bit. Where God didn't want you to have to toil the way you toil in life. But because we decided that we wanted that joker. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me. We decided that we want her or them, wherever y'all's hang up is, because we decide, y'all going to be quiet? I'm a preacher on everything I know. If we decided we wanted that, so now we got to sweat. It's called sweating. All right. You're supposed to sweat, and you should be sweating over your work, not over a person. But, okay. Okay. Yeah. Am, I, am I in the... Uh, just uh, y'all can smile. Just smile. It's okay. Because we all made that mistake. If you sit here and lie, I'm going to get you. You're lying. If you ain't sweating, you sweated somebody. Yeah. Yeah, you were sweating over somebody. Somebody say amen. I said somebody say amen. Sweating over somebody or somebody's. Amen. All right. Let me hurry up through here. I'm trying to get y'all out. I'm trying to get y'all out quick so y'all... And since y'all decided not to come today, I'm going I'm to I'm come down this row. Uh, I want you to understand um, the perception of seasons of life. The perception. The perception is that God, oh, is that First Lady Brown? Baby, get up here. Sit up here. God bless you. Let's give First Lady Brown a hand. Yes, you shall. The, the, the perception, the perception of a season is that God is not there. That's very good. Right. I need y'all to, to hear, I need you to hear me, that in each, perce- in each season, the perception is God is not there. Now, this is going to be very hard. Before I give you scripture, before I go on, I need you to understand that God is present in every season. Yes but he does not experience season. God doesn't experience winter. He doesn't know what it is. He doesn't have to be cold or hot. He he doesn't have to be, he he doesn't experience fall. He he watches us experience it, even though he causes it. God is not moved by your seasonal praise. God is not moved by your seasonal crime. Y'all pay attention here. God's not moved by your seasonal tears. He's not moved by your by your funny acting ways. He's not moved that today you came to church and you halfway want to praise. Last week when the shout music started, y'all all was on the floor, wiggly bopping. This week you're on the floor, only a few of y'all are moving your shoulder because you got a seasonal praise. And God is not, because if God was in the season, he would have cursed the rest of our seasons. Uh huh. Because the way you're acting right now doesn't, doesn't denote that you're in the summer month. And see, some of y'all, y'all can only praise him when it's springing forward. Mm-hmm. But when you got to fall back, you don't praise him. But the devil is a liar. That's why you got to learn. I will bless the Lord at all and in every season, I, in every season, I will bless him at all times. And his praise shall continually, even when it's cold. See, because God, I need to tell Joy City, what God is getting ready to do for us, we cannot have, we cannot have a praise that's only contingent on feeling good. And I don't want to surface preach. I don't like surface preaching. But a lot of us, we praise God only when it feels good. Only when things line up, we make a joyful noise. And there becomes a problem because it becomes a demonic stronghold when you praise God because of. You got to learn how to praise him 
when your body tells you no, when your hands say don't clap, when your feet are heavy, because there's something my cut about us. There's some days when you're gonna come in and your feet are heavy, but you gotta learn how to give God praise. You gotta lift your feet up. I command my feet to move. I command my hands to move. I command my tongue to say hallelujah. I command my mind to take on his goodness, because I will bless the Lord. I wish I had a witness in the room. I will bless him at all times. Not when I feel good, but because he's worthy. He woke me up this morning and everything I need, if he don't do it, he's still able. Don't start, don't start. I ain't there yet. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, I've been through storms and rains. I've been through heartache and pain. I've been through hell and high water. When I couldn't dance, I moved my arm. When I couldn't move my arm, I moved my shoulder. When I couldn't move my shoulder, I moved my eyes. But I would not be still, because I know the Lord is worthy. Even when my body don't respond, my mind does. Tap your own self and say, God is worthy of all my praise. May not feel good, but he's worthy. All right, have a seat. Hey, you are in the hallway. You're in the hallway. Now, you're in the hallway. In the right building, but you're in the hallway. Every, every remember, every, uh, every remember going, going to high school, going to high school, and you gotta, don't you start in the hallway. This is a message that preaches his own self. <laughs> well, if you're going to praise him, look at somebody. Tap your neighbor. I said, tap. Your neighbor and tell your neighbor it's been a long, it's been a long uphill journey, but the Lord, He's been by my side. I might be in the hallway, but I'm in the right building. I may not be in the room, but I'm in the right place at the right time. Can the church say yes? Open your mouth. And say yes. The devil's mad because you're in the right place. So get out of the hall and find the right room. Your season's in another room. Your season's in a room. Open the door and say, Welcome, sunshine. I'm here right now. Y'all messing me up. Stop, please. Stop. My case. I haven't built my case to preach. I haven't built my case to preach. The devil's not mad at your navigation. He's mad when you get out the car. He's mad that you got to the right place. God's in the building. Just look at somebody and tell them God's in the building. And if he's in the building, you'll find the room. Y'all been here. I said if he's in the building, you'll find the right room. All you need is God to be in the building. Can it just say yes? Say yes. Say yes. Oh, how about the whole Glory to God. <laughs> <laughs> 